Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world with self-care strategies from Chinese medicine. I'm your host, Brody Welch, here to support you on your journey of health, happiness, and personal evolution. Hello, hello, and welcome to today's show. We are in the heart of the season of yin here in the Northern Hemisphere, season of yin being that which is cold and dark and wet and moving inward and moving downward, moving us into the depths of our being, which in Chinese medicine correlates with the water element, the kidney and bladder organs, which deal with water metabolism in the body, as well as housing our essence, that specialness of who we are at our core, which we need to be in touch with if we are hoping to express that outward into the world. So this is a really important time of year to be doing things like getting a lot of sleep, going deep to restore our yin at a deep level so that we have yang for the rest of the year. So I wanted to share just a couple of ways in which I am celebrating this season of the yin And the first of which is just by letting myself get sleep, which is not easy for me to do necessarily, or actually I'm flipping that script. Uh, Historically, it has been challenging for me to shut my mind off at night and even to get tired because I think even though I've gotten way better at reducing my caffeine intake, I still have the midday raw chocolate beverage that I love Uh, And caffeine takes a full 10 hours to get out of your system completely. So, and I don't know whether this is just a byproduct of revving myself either chemically or attitudinally, but it is hard for me to wind down and go to sleep at night. And so one of the things that I have been doing because I am committed to sleep saturation this season for my immune system and just to get out of this feeling like I'm running from a deficit, like just getting back into energy integrity. So what that looks like is making sure that screens are off even earlier than my screen cutoff curfew was before and spending time on the floor of my room, allowing myself to stretch and open my body and do some self massage in whatever way feels good without even like a set idea of what I'm going to do when I get down there. It's just kind of a, an organic process that allows the animal of my body to to just do what it needs to do so it's willing to go to sleep. And that also gives me some time to just turn over my day and my mind and to reflect on what went well, what didn't go well, what I could do differently, what needs my attention tomorrow. So it's sort of a, a gentle self-reflection practice. And sometimes I'll write kind of the conclusion that whatever takeaways I have in a little journal and just hang on to that, acknowledge the fact that I'm learning something from today so that my tomorrow is not going to be the same. So this winding down routine has been really helpful for me, not only to relax my body and mind, but also to make sure that I am living in accordance with my values on a day-to-day basis. And that is another part of the season of yin, yin being water again, and water is reflective, that ability to, to gaze into a still pond or lake and see a reflection in it is a quality of water. So it's a really good time of year to be a bit introspective, to be considering what what it is that's important to you and how you want to align with that in the coming year. So I'm curious what you're going to do differently in 2019, or if we're thinking about aligning with nature, it's the yang that is born right after the darkest night of the year, the winter solstice, which we're coming up on here. So at the winter solstice, it's like the pinnacle of yin. It is like the, it does not get more yin than that. And then at its extreme of yin, we of course begin the birth of the yang, the the beginning of the return of the light, the day is getting longer. The symbolism here is that we go as deep as we possibly can right now so that we can launch this rockin', powerful, action, productive, new vision, new growth, new version of ourselves that comes next. 
but it's really hard to launch that if you haven't done the going into yin. It's really hard to have the energy unless you go into the deep rest. So I'd encourage all of you listening, if you want to align with natural cycles by getting some deep rest, doing some reflection, and considering what of yourself needs to die so that the next version of yourself can be reborn in the new year or with the return of the light, that would be an excellent way of aligning with the natural cycles. Because as we know, we are a part of nature and nature is moving through us as well as we move through it. So that is a little bit of encouragement. If some of the things on your 2019, what you want to give birth to, what you want to start embodying has to do with honoring your yin as well as your yang, i.e. honoring your soul, honoring your body, honoring your intuition. You have to slow down enough to actually hear these things because the world moves faster than our bodies, our intuition, and our, our deepest inner voice can move. It's like what it means to honor this inner being it means listening to it moment by moment so that we can act in accordance with what it's saying. And this could be just like the simple stuff like, oh, I'm tired, I'm going to go to sleep. Or like, oh, yeah, I um, I feel like I need to open my body up in this way to unlock this tight muscle versus I need to have a conversation with this person because this is on my mind and needs to be expressed. In order to know that those things are bubbling up under the surface, we need to be in tune with them. And there's no better way of getting in tune with your body than prioritizing its self-care. And if you could use some help with that, I would love to work with you. There are a few spots in my schedule to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, and there's also a few spaces left in my Level Up group, which is launching in January. And that looks like three months of automating the dead simple body habits that we all need to thrive. But while doing that, Doing things like setting boundaries for the things that matter most in our lives, really getting rid of the things that stress us out, which a lot of times is our own thinking and our limiting beliefs about how we have to be in the world, so that we can show up from a place of feeling centered and calm. And in doing that, it's not this selfish thing. It actually is what allows us to show up with presence for the people in our lives and enables us access to our most creative work and our most productive work. So if that is interesting to you, the time is now. Do not hesitate. Go over to brodywelch.com, Brody with an IE, Welch with the CH. Head to the level up page and click on the application. If it seems like we're a good fit to work together, I will invite you to have a chat with me and then we will get rolling together. And if you are operating from a place of exhaustion, you're needing a reboot, you need a time out, you need a week on the beach to breathe and move and meditate and just sink into some relaxation, then come to Mexico with me, February 16th to 23rd. We do have a few spots left, although I do expect it to fill up and soon. So head to brodywelch.com forward slash retreat. So happy season of yin, everyone. Happy winter solstice. And I hope that you do take some time to yourself to do something that feels deeply restful and reflective and that connects you to you. Okay, on to today's show. Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity. I'm your host, Brody Welch, a licensed acupuncturist, Chinese medicine expert, and holistic self-care strategist. And I am so excited for today's show because, as you all know, if you listen, I super appreciate any opportunity I get to geek out with fellow Chinese medicine practitioners, experts, and anyone who is a student of the flow of energy and consciousness in the body. I love opening up people's minds to just how powerful this medicine can be. And with me today is a fellow practitioner of Chinese medicine and also a world-renowned Qigong teacher. My guest is Lee Holden. And I think of Lee as one of the leading ambassadors of Qigong in the United States. And Qigong, for those who may not be familiar, is one of the branches of Chinese medicine. A lot of people think of acupuncture and Chinese herbs as like the two branches of Chinese medicine, but really there are five. And one of them is Qigong, which means energy exercise or energy cultivation or energy skill. And this basically skill with our own energy, our own life force can be put to all sorts of different uses. 
I wrote an article a few years ago for the Huffington Post where I described Qigong as yoga's less popular and less sexy cousin. So while yoga deals with opening up the body to encourage the flow of prana, the life force, Qigong is very similar in that it involves opening up the body and the, and the channels, the meridians of acupuncture that we can identify to cultivate the body's chi. So I first became familiar with Lee Holden a few years ago or m- many years ago at this point. Uh, before I had done my Qigong teacher training, I had his videos in my office to send people home with because I've always been about empowering people to take care of themselves with as many branches of Chinese medicine as possible. And Lee had these great, super practical Qigong videos that uh, where people could could learn from the comfort of their own home because Qigong is still totally not mainstream. Lee has this huge library of Qigong DVDs. He was um, a regular fixture on PBS, on American public television. He has worked with world famous people like Deepak Chopra and, and studied with Montak Chia, who's one of the most widely revered Qigong experts out there. And he's a stress management consultant to top Silicon Valley corporations like Apple and 3Com and Cisco. And he is uh, just an all-around wealth of information about Qigong. Lee Holden, welcome to A Healthy Curiosity. Oh, thanks so much. This is so fun. I loved uh, how you described Qigong. And it's just so important to be able to have our, our resources in hand in this modern world where people seem to be so stressed out. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> I uh, yeah, the more that we can do for ourselves, like I think you would agree, like that that what we do every day is going to have a much more powerful lever over how we end up feeling than anything that any practitioner can do to us in a in a session. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. From what I understand about your backstory, you got into this stuff quite literally by accident. Is that right? Well, kind of sort of. Yeah, I did. I mean, I think the way in which I got into it we never know where life's going to take us. You know, we think it's going to go this way and all of a sudden you're a Qigong teacher. You know, my, my dad was a judge and a lawyer and my mom was an aerobics instructor. And so apparently when you put those two together, you get Qigong. <laughs> uh, so it's just interesting. I never thought I'd be, you know, teaching Eastern philosophy, Qigong, Chinese medicine. And yet here I am. It started with me with um, an athletic injury and often injuries or pain or, or problems sometimes turn out to be our, our greatest lessons in life and our, and, and our greatest catalyst to move us in a direction that we didn't even know was possible. Mm, the obstacle is the way so often. Yeah, the obstacle is the way. But I did have an injury playing collegiate soccer. I was completely crushed and shattered with this injury that I had. And I was finally made the first string team and I was traveling with, with the team and I got injured and the doctor said I was going to be out for the season. So I was really moping around campus and I could barely walk and I took cortisone shots and painkillers and some physical therapy kinds of exercises and nothing was helping until I I remembered when I was a kid, I had studied with a martial arts teacher that talked about chi. In fact, he broke a big stack of bricks, which, you know, to a 10 year old was really impressive. And he told me he did it by harnessing his chi and that chi was used for healing. So I went back back home, got some acupuncture treatments and learned some Qigong. And I was better in like one treatment, 50% better, two treatments, 75. And within a week to 10 days, I was back playing soccer. And that was really a catalyst. I was like, why aren't more people learning this? And how do I learn more? And, um, you know, away I went. I went to Asia. I did 12 trips to Asia to study Qigong and Eastern medicine. And, uh, you know, I was hired by Montak Chia you mentioned Montek Chia. He hired me as his ghostwriter. And so I got really personal one-on-one training with him. And uh, it was just, you know, such a great experience at, at an early age to be able to have access to these great teachings and amazing masters uh, to study with. So cool. Wow. That's awesome. And, and just, I, I'm so I'm struck like that story about how quickly you healed. It's one of those things like that is not abnormal or uncommon, right? Like in our experience as with acupuncture, it can catalyze the body to self-heal, which is the whole point, right? Like the body is intelligent. It knows how to heal and harnessing the body's resources to, and the body's wicked smart. And just a lot of times just helping it heal itself. There's some tremendous power there. And for, yeah, for people who still are out there going, but I'm afraid of needles, it's like, wow. Yeah. Just these stories need to get out there because it 
because it's like, I, you know, <laughs> do not let the tiny 30 little filaments that can fit inside a hypodermic needle stop you from healing efficiently. No, right? Anyway. That's not really scary. I mean, people get, oh, needles are scary. What's scary is being stressed out, having chronic illness and being in pain. I mean, Absolutely. That's, that's scary. <laughs> that's exactly. And, you know, needles and Chinese medicine, it's been around a long time. And it really is just accessing the wisdom and the intelligence that's already innate in your body. I mean, your body has incredible intelligence. If we unlock its wisdom and its power, we can get some extraordinary results. And that our human potential is really vast if we know, if we have the right tools to tap into it. Yeah, really, really true. So there's like this obstacle out there to acupuncture where people are afraid of needles or it seems mysterious or whatever. Qigong, I think people are also equally sort of confused by, mystified by. There's a certain amount of skepticism, I think, for just like when you try to describe, oh, well, Qigong is this energy healing thing, or it's this, you know, it's this self cultivation. It, it just sounds, it, it's really easy to make it sound really kind of out there and woo woo and, and yep. new agey, even though it's been around for thousands of years. And you're a really good translator of this medicine for a Western audience, like both literally as well as, as, um, figuratively, or you make it real for people. Uh -huh. So I'd love to know kind of like when you're working with people who, who might not be interested in the esoterica of, of Chinese medicine, who might just want, like, I just want to feel better. I just want more energy. I just want like to heal my, my injury. How do you explain Qigong for people? This is what I do. I love it because I would come home from Montauk Chia's center or traveling in Asia. And what I learned was a lot of esoteric practices and that I'm like, my soccer player friends or my high school friends that are in Silicon Valley corporations maybe won't resonate with this sort of spiritual woo-woo stuff yeah. that maybe I'm interested in. So I really broke it down to what do people want? What are, what are people interested in in the Western world? Because usually it's some kind of energy. So basically, Qigong, I explain it as less stress and more energy. You know, everybody wants more energy. And in fact, I was just at the park with my kids and this woman was like, oh my God, how do you keep up with those three kids of yours? I mean, I can't even keep up with my one kid. I'm so tired all the time. I got work. I'm a single mom. I got this. And I was like, you know, Qigong is like putting the energy of a six-year-old in a bottle. It gets, it gets you charged up and it gives you the right energy when you need it. And also it's wonderful because it clears the stress that we sort of internalize in our bodies, whether it's tension in the neck and shoulders or digestive issues. Most of our physiological problems can be rooted in a stress response. So we go to the root cause in Chinese medicine, whether it's acupuncture or Qigong, and we clear it by releasing or relieving the stress and giving your mind and your body the energy that it actually needs. And so that's why Qigong is so, so powerful because it's going to give you, going to give you the energy that you need and the energy that you're actually seeking, maybe that we don't even have the language to describe. It's funny, your, your description of less stress, more energy. Literally, one of the first things that I put out there about Qigong was less pain, more energy. It's because like, wow. I feel like it's, it is, it is really, it's the yin and the yang of it, right? It moves our energy through places that, you know, in Chinese medicine, there's this idea that where there is stagnation or like where there is no free flow of qi where there's stagnation, there's pain. And where there is no stagnation, where there, like, there is free flow, there is no pain. So it's like, so Qigong is, is awesome for pain relief, but it's also, it's this way that we, that we recharge our batteries. It's one of those ways that, you know, if people want to know where energy comes from, from a Chinese medicine perspective, it comes from the food that we eat and our ability to digest that food and create, like create the nourishing chi is that anything we can't digest, we can't use. Uh -huh. Plus the air that we breathe, right? So that's really, this is really the chi of the air, the chi of the environment that we take into ourselves. And then of course, the digestion of our lived experience in the world and whether or not that gives back to us or depletes us. So this idea that when people think that like, well, where does energy, what can I take to have more energy? It's like, that's kind of the wrong question. It's more like, how can I source energy internally in a responsible way? Way. Qigong is the art of effortless power and it comes by mirroring or watching the movements of nature. You know, nature doesn't have a lack of energy and it's weird that we all as human beings, being organic creatures that we forget that we are grown and are organic. No, we're not machines. Yeah, I know, right? Well, we do have this in the West, we have this mechanical view of the world that things are made from the outside in when really they're grown from the inside out. So we 
we cultivate and grow our own systems like a gardener creates a garden. You know, this is what differentiates, you know, Western medicine and Chinese medicine is these two paradigms where yeah. Western medicine is going to see like, oh, things are made. It's more mechanical. That's why it's easy to just like take out organs or the mind and the body don't communicate and your how you feel and your emotions don't influence your physiology when, of course, we know now that that is not the case. Everything's interconnected and integrated. And so when we look at energy, we, we feel ourselves being more complete, more whole, not only within ourselves, but part of a larger whole in a larger context. So by mirroring the movements of nature, we create a very natural way of expressing energy in our body. You know, nature doesn't have a lack of energy. The, the waves in the ocean don't go, oh, I'm too tired to roll up onto the shore. You know, birds don't wake up in the morning, I'm too tired to sing. You know? Exactly. And, and, and if, the, if nature is not flourishing in a particular ecosystem, likely all of the things that aren't flourishing in that ecosystem could be brought back into balance if one thing were different, right? Like the, your, your garden, all the plants might be better if there was a little less shade or a little more sunshine or a little more or less water or a little more fertilizer in the soil from organic matter. And, you know, that just those kinds of things that are that as you're supporting one system, you're helping the whole to flourish. Yeah. That's right. And that's why when we feel more, let's say, clear in our minds or we are more emotionally balanced, your physiology and your the health and vitality of your body starts to thrive. So really, I see Qigong as tools, resources, and techniques to help you live your happiest, healthiest, most compelling, most fulfilled life. Absolutely. That's all that it is. Love that. Love that definition. It's also, I can't decide really whether it's more a moving meditation or a gentle exercise. You know, it can be both. You know, Qigong, there's 3,500 styles of Qigong. That's not movements. That's styles. And wow. Talk about <laughs> yoga. I mean, there's, you know, I can count maybe 15 styles of yoga, but 3,500 styles of Qigong, you're going to get everything from really simple flows to very vigorous martial arts kind of stretch exercises to, I mean, I'm teaching an online course right now called Dao Yin, which is very much like um, yoga practice. You got a lot of vigorous stretching, you know, in a Qigong style. So instead of being in a pose, you're flowing through poses, but there's so many ways to express the movements of energy. And it just depends on what do you need in your life at this moment? You know, maybe in the morning you need more energy, maybe in the afternoon you need less stress. Maybe you need more focus in your mind. Maybe you need a lower blood pressure. Maybe you want to feel spiritually connected. We have a style of Qigong that will supplement and support you into getting the energy that you want at that particular stage in your life. Such a good point that it can be put to so many different purposes, just like I just like if you want to strengthen your liver, there's foods that you can eat. There's, you know, there there's supplements that you can take. Qigong, there's a movement for every organ system. There's a movement for every purpose that you could want uh, put to your body. And and some of the some of the forms, as you're mentioning, like, yeah, they're 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 super vigorous or they're really relaxing. You don't actually ha even have to move at all for some forms of qigong. It's just directing energy around the body with your mind. And so they range like this, if, if you want to put it on a spectrum, from very internal and very um, kind of mind, body, breath focused, but without any movement to static postures, like you might hold like a, you know, just standing like a tree, for example, you know, and just, you could even do it with a tree where you're, you're interchanging your energy with it, with your imagination and, and, and adopting that static posture, but feeling it. Um, and then there's these flowing circular kind of repetitive movements that allow you to, to kind of deepen into the presence without having to like, that's one of the reasons I like it over Tai Chi is that like, there's so much repetition a lot of times that, that you can really drop into your body without being like, Ooh, is my foot at this 45 degree angle? Like it's supposed to, and what comes next and how, you know, like what, what's my hand supposed to look like? And I know that of course there's, there's lots of different teaching styles out there. One of, uh, I studied with, um, Dr. Liu Dong and Master Liu He, and they both talk about, it's like they've had Qigong in their family for 10 generations. And they talk about how like all the trees in the forest don't grow to look exactly the same. And so how it looks in your body is like different than how it looks in mine. And that's okay. And like, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, exactly quote unquote right. And I think that getting away from that sort of like, am I doing it right? At, like that sort of masculine paradigm of like the, of exactitude that can be present in martial arts traditions makes it much more accessible. Like you said, nothing in nature is going, oh, am I flowing down the mountain right? You know, the river is not, is not looking at all the rocks in the way and going, oh, I'm so stressed out about 
these boulders in my path. You know, there's a, there's a continuity and a flow. And I think really what we want to think about is what's going to create this flow state in my life. And how do I create moments of high vibration or high energy and deep relaxation at the same time each and every day? Because that's your reset button. And that's when your activation, your own greatest healing energy becomes activated. And, you know, really what we all want is to drop into a flow state. I know this from athletics is that flow state was described as being in the zone. And when you're in the zone, everything goes your way, the right passes, the right way in which the team is engaged. And then we seem to drop out of this in modern life where we get into the monotony and the low vibration and the stress where, you know, really what I want to use Qigong as a catalyst to get people into flow state each and every day where they're bringing this high, excited, passionate energy out so that they have peak experiences in what they're doing as well. And there's some characteristics to flow state that we describe in Qigong and is described in athletics. And one it is being in the moment, so you're present. The second characteristic of flow state is highly energized. The third is you have a oneness with the things that you're doing. And basically what we've just described is a Qigong flow. You're in the moment, so you're not thinking about what's going on later or what's happening in the past. Your mind is present with the movements and you're doing these movements, but you're doing them in a very relaxed, water-like way. And I tell you, people, when they do it, Qigong for just a little bit, they feel great. You know, the tension melts out and the energy rises. And all of a sudden we're like, oh my gosh, I feel this blissful energy that I didn't know that I could. All right. So now the people out there who are like, I want in on this, this sounds great. I am curious, uh, just in your life, what is like the simplest, most accessible practice you could introduce to our listeners to help them get a taste of what you're talking about? Well, I think, you know, you, you did say, you know, breath, breathing is, is amazing because breath is the quickest source to chi. Think of chi as your aliveness. It's nothing esoteric or weird. It's just, it's the force that makes you alive. You know, somebody came up and was like, I don't believe in chi. And I was like, oh, that's fine. I don't think there's anything you need to believe in. Right. What's the word? Do you believe you're alive? Let's, we, we'll yeah, see. Right. Do you language. believe in breath? Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe you're breathing? <laughs> and, you know, it's, there is an aliveness and we don't, it's mysterious. That's why there's no word and, and we can't believe in it because it's beyond any concepts. Yes. And so breath can be a really quick way to get us grounded and in the present moment. But let me give you guys something that you can feel your own chi and it's something we could do without having uh, you know, to see something, without visual, uh, it's not a visual exercise. Take your fingernails and just touch them together. If you're in your car, you'll skip this part till when you're somewhere else. But yes, every, right. everybody else, we've got our fingertips together, okay. Brody, that's why you're the professional. You know where your <laughs> listeners are. I'm, I'm looking out for everyone's safety, yeah. right? <laughs> Those of you in the car, don't do this yet. <laughs> you're gonna take your fingernails, touch them together, and also that first neck, knuckle is gonna be touching. And you're just going to go back and forth fairly vigorously. Rub your fingernails together. And um, the ends of the meridians, these are the energy pathways, end up at the kind of the corners of the nails. So you're stimulating some acupressure points. And now do some deep breathing. Just take some deep breaths in and out through the nose. Everybody breathing and rubbing their fingernails together. Don't make me do this all by myself. I'm with you, Lee. Okay, good. Thank you. You know, rub them back and forth. We're going to take one more deep breath. And we're, what I want you to do is feel your chi and get an experience of what chi feels like in your body. Now, exhale all the way out and bring your hands to your sides or in your lap and see if you can feel this nice buzzing, tingling electricity in your hands. And then I want you to just be curious about what that sensation is. Everybody feel it? You feel it, Brody? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, a little buzz, tingling. So your body has electricity in it. We all know this, that your body is an electrical body. It's also a mechanical body. But the form and the formless, the physiology and the energy work together. And this is how life works. There's a form, let's say like the earth, but there's also a formless energy, which is gravity. You have the sun, there's a form, and then the formless energy is the electromagnetism. And you, much like the sun and the earth have a form, but you also have an energy that moves through you and extends even all around you. And how this energy moves determines the quality of our life. So when chi is circulating, like you said, Brody, we have a response, a side effect of feeling better in our bodies, in our minds, and in our hearts. 
And so when we get chi to circulate and we feel this electricity, it has tremendous benefits to your mind and your body. Great. Do you have a favorite way that you use Qigong in the flow of your day? Like, do you take little Qigong breaks or what, what's your practice look like? Yeah, I absolutely take Qi breaks, you know, all day. But I usually, you know, I like to start the day with some Qigong because I just feel like I'm just a better person when I'm on Qigong than when I'm not. So I, I start the day with, you know, ideally a half an hour. And some days I get an hour in, some days I only get five to 10 minutes but I get myself set up mentally and energetically to have a fantastic day by setting intention or by doing certain exercises that will help to get my energy up. But I also like to do Qigong at the end of the day to clear any stress that I picked up, other people's energy. It helps to give you a really good night's sleep. And this helps to you know, create harmony and balance in your overall life. Nice. I, I'm always interested in what people are actually doing, you know, and whether or not they walk their talk and the fact that you do. Oh, yeah. I think speaks volumes about the fact that like this stuff actually works. It actually works. It's yeah. incredible. I mean, I think that's the thing, you know, people just need to try it to mm -hmm. get an experience of it and you'll see what we're talking about. Absolutely. So you and I have been talking about how Qigong can be used for healing, how it can be used as stress relief, how it can be used as a way of feeling more energized. And you and I are also both interested in personal evolution, really helping people step into their full potential. And I'm curious as to what role you see Qigong playing in that. By opening and expanding what is possible as in our human potential, I mean, one of the projects that I've been working on, we were just talking about, um, Brody, before we jumped on, is a, is a project on human potential. And I've done a lot of traveling, traveling around the world, Asia and Europe and all kinds of places, meeting incredible people with lots of different talents. And what I've found is that people's human potential is vast. And that if we can tap into it, if we get inspired about what we're capable of and what we can create, our energy goes way, way up. Just to be inspired and get out of our pattern routines of stress and monotony can really open and expand our horizons into what's possible. Love to hear more about this movie. This movie has been ex so exciting. It just kind of dropped into my lap. I got this phone call one day from the director of The Secret. Remember that movie? Uh huh. Yeah. It was a very popular movie in the, I think it was early 2000s. Highest grossing documentary of all time, by the way. Interesting. So the guys from The Secret called me and they said, Do you know any extraordinary people uh, in Asia or anywhere around the world? We want to make a movie called Superhuman. And I was like, yeah, as a matter of fact, one of my really good friends who I was a colleague with at Montauk Chia's place in Thailand, he's an anthropologist and he has gone around the world finding these people. And long story short, we went around the world for two years filming people and are just ending that journey and have a final edit of this amazing footage that we got by traveling and meeting people with spiritual talents, healing abilities, psychic spiritual, all kinds of things. And we try to capture it on film the best that we could. And uh, yeah, it was very fun. Why were you passionate about doing that? Is it the kind of thing where, where you want people to, to recognize their own potential to develop these kind of skills or like just to documenting that it's possible or like where, where, where was the juice for you? You know, I was fascinated myself because I've been exposed to this world. I've seen a few things. It was kind of, maybe it just stems back to that 10 year old me where I saw this guy break a huge stack of bricks in some of the footage that we had or uh, that I've archived is when you hook up these martial artists that break bricks to like crash test dummy um, devices, they find that the pounds per pressure should shatter the bone in the arm. So it's like something like 2,500 pounds per pressure when it hits that hard brick, but it doesn't. So where is the mind overcoming matter? And that's what we found is that there's lots of people that have been able to use their mind to overcome these often self-imposed limitations. So my fascination is what does it mean for the human potential? How can we share it with other people to make this a much better world? And this really fascinating story of my friend David Verdesi traveling around and finding these masters that most people don't believe in and being able to showcase it in a really compelling way not necessarily to prove beyond a shadow of doubt that these people exist, but more to 
pose the question of what's possible for you? It's really an interesting question, I think, is that is that a lot of times, like I, I think that a lot of well, what the secret gets wrong is like it's not like if if you have problems in your life, it's not because you're not like thinking enough positive thoughts and you know, or like you haven't spent enough time with your vision board or whatever. But um the idea that some things and again, like to your point, to, like you don't have to believe in chi for it to be effective for you. You don't have to believe in acupuncture for it to work. But yet when your mind is on board, we know that all sorts of, it, it's like even more powerful, like p- morphine works better when people understand that they're taking it and why know, right? and things like that. And so when we think about like, I, I can remember back to like pulse t- a, a pulse taking class that I that I spent a weekend on and thinking about like being able to, to um, so we all study pulse taking in Chinese medicine school. We listen to three different depths and three different positions on each side and that tells us a little bit about the internal organs and their health. And then um, there's all sorts of dynamic pulse taking, like what happens if you press down this finger and then you raise up on this one. And it, the whole pulse can tell a story. And as soon as I opened myself up to like, okay, well, maybe the pulse can tell me something about what happened when someone was young, or maybe the pulse can tell me about a trauma and some, you know, like, cause I never thought that I had that skill, but when I immersed myself in it for that two or three day, whatever it was, class, and I let it become possible to get information about somebody from their pulse. And then I checked it out with them. I was floored at how like right on a lot of it was. And I was like, wait, how is it possible that I can know this from something that I just learned like yesterday, literally, and have zero faith in myself? I know, right? <laughs> but it was, yeah. And, and it's like, I, I don't practice that way anymore. But for that minute of time where where my mind was open to the fact that this might be a possible way of knowing that I could trust, it totally changed my paradigm about what it could be possible to know about my patients. And it's like, that to me is fascinating. So fascinating. I mean, just just the idea of placebo is fascinating. If we, if we go that almost all medicine works by placebo, that your mind your mind always is doing mind over matter. Mm-hmm. And just how do, we, how do we work on that mechanism? And what I'm finding in these, in these people with extraordinary abilities is that they've been able to use the power of the mind consistently. We're doing power of the mind and using it. Maybe we believe in this, maybe we don't. It almost seems like we, we're trying to trick ourselves. But the way in which we can utilize the power of the mind to influence matter or our bodies or our life is tremendous. I mean, that's, this is one message of the secret is like, how do we, you know, the way in which we think about our lives and our world has impact. You know, I think, like you said, it shouldn't be a simplistic way that just because I think positive means everything in my life is going to be positive. And we know that from yin yang theory in Chinese medicine, that whatever it is that you manifest in your life or bring about into your life, it's going to have some polarity. You manifest the perfect partner and the perfect love relationship it doesn't mean it's just going to be always happily ever after. It means that there's some work to be done, that positive, negative emotions come with each and every circumstance. And how we show up, deal with, and work with the energy of each of those circumstances and responses determines the quality of our life. Yeah. And in order to have access to the positive, we have to not be afraid of the negative and we have to to really understand it, um, allow it to be, hang mm-hmm. out with it so that we can let it go. This is the idea in Chinese medicine or in Qigong, you're gardening, that your negative, let's say negative emotional energy is the compost that's going to grow your very lush and vibrant garden. So it's not about getting rid of the negative because negative energy is here with us, but it's how do we actually use that energy? to support our own best selves. You know, you know, a lot of negative emotions are here for a very good reason. You know, somebody passes away that you love or life changes, you lose a job or, you know, whatever it is, the most natural reaction is to feel sad or maybe to feel down a little bit. That brings us closer to life, but then we can compost it. We can grow from it and we can evolve into that next, next person that we are becoming. I feel like Qigong can be a super useful tool in just the willingness to hang out with ourselves without distraction and like, because emotions are just chi and she will flow if it's given 
permission. And so like there's, you know, there, and there's certain Qigong movements that we can do that actually help with moving the chi through the heart and like through the different organ systems um, and open, opening the, the flow of chi, especially in the chest that can help us discharge um, anything that's pent up there and that, that might be blocking us from the ability to be present. There's this, there's this notion in Chinese medicine, right? This, uh, or in, in from, from Taoism of emptiness, right? Mm-hmm. And that like the heart, the heart has to be empty in order to experience experience the present moment because if the heart the heart is in Chinese medicine the emotional center but also sort of the seat of consciousness and so if it's clouded by what happened yesterday or preconditioned there's something in the way of our full experience of what's happening now and so there's that idea of like continuing to empty out of the past in in order to, to allow us to to bring our heart chi into uh, into present time that's very often what happens is that our emotional energy isn't connected to the present moment. And that's when we really get stress and creates stagnant energy. I mean, emotion, energy in motion, energy movement, because when we talk about the physiology, that's form. But when we talk about emotions, this is a formless. We can't open up the heart, do heart surgery and see how much love we have in our hearts. Right. This is all formless energy, but it really rules our life. Life is ruled by invisible forces, whether it's gravity, <laughs> whether it's, you know, electromagnetism or inside of you, it's your mind, you know? hormones, oh, neurotransmitters, like, yeah, all sorts invisible. of things. Yeah. 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 It is totally fascinating. Fascinating. Right. One of the things too, just like while we're just wrapping up this point about the mind and emotions as, as playing into our physiology, but also our, our direct experience and, and how we process the world is that in Qigong, we put our minds to use, right? Like we, we employ the mind and especially the faculty of imagination. I find like when I'm teaching, I'll encourage people to imagine that their energy body, of course the energy body is outside the body as well as inside, but making it way bigger, right? Like taking up way more space than we're used to, really feeling our connection into the earth, into the sky, into stars, into all, and all this stuff. And it's sort of like, I, I imagine it almost like in a cartoon fantasy world of like how we're wielding these forces of nature that resonate with our internal organs. And, and just uh, like, it can sound a little hokey, but it can also be really fun. <laughs> and like, so I just, I just wanted to like br- bring that up. And a lot of times, like there's a point where, when you practice Qigong, the ratio of imagination to reality starts to change. Yeah. Where you go from imagining that you're gathering energy from the earth to actually feeling energy from the earth coming into your body. And that that is, um, that's a really cool shift that takes place as a practitioner. How long do you feel like it when you are working with students, like how long does it take for Qi to start to feel real for people or for, uh, you know, well, this is what I love to do is I love giving people an, an experience and just like we did uh, with the fingernail exercise, yeah. we actually feel something and we can put our consciousness on something. For example, you, you know, she is always there. It's like the air, you know, the air around us is invisible. Another formless aspect that rules life. If you can right now as listeners feel the air on your face and feel the air, let's say on the back or on the palms of your hands, you can sort of sense it and start to feel it. Where was the air before you put your mind to it? It was always there. We just weren't aware of it. Your chi much is the same way. It's just, it's there, but we just need to tune into the subtleness of this invisible energy. Our minds are so used to paying attention to the objects, the objectified world, the forms, all the stuff. But, you know, you look at two things in your room, there's space in between. You look at two people, there's space in between. So to be able to see the spaces is the connection, is where the chi is. You know, these aren't separate objects, but everything is connected in this sea of energy. In Qigong, they say we as human beings are in a sea of chi, an energy field, but like fish that don't know they're in water, we don't realize or recognize that we're in this field of energy. And as soon as we start to put our minds there, it starts to show up. Then we start to see the synchronicities, the connections, and the integrations rather than feeling so cut off and separate and, you know, alone. Oh, exactly. Because really that, 
the chi is what unites us. It flows outside us, inside us, between us. And really our bodies, our bodies are mainly empty space with just tiny little bits of matter. And so, so yeah. like if we can shift into that paradigm of thinking of ourselves as these energy beings that happen to have a little bit of stuff, uh, you know, atoms and molecules and things like that, mm -hmm. uh, but that we're primarily chi, we're pri that a lot more becomes possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Lee, you have been a great guest in terms of gi giving us some practical things to do to experience our own, our own energy. And I know you have a ton of other resources that people can access um, on your website. Is that leeholden.com? Is that the best way to... Um, no, the best one is holdenqigong.com. Holdenqigong.com. Yeah. Great. We'll make sure -G -G. that... Y-G-O-N-G. Holdenqigong. Awesome. And then on there, if you, if you, there's a free little five day mini course that gives you seven minutes workouts for five days in a row. Uh, we just film these like right here at the beach in California. So they're really nice and gives you a quick little boost of energy. You can try it yourself. It only takes seven minutes. So trying to take the excuse out of people trying to do Qigong and just like, Hey, it's only seven minutes. See if you can feel some energy in these seven minute exercises. And of course it's free. So excellent. Uh, my website, brodywelch.com, also has access to a couple super simple Qigong things. Um, and as well as I have an online Qigong course that can be done in 20 minutes or less. And if you feel like doing Qigong with me on the beach, I am leading a Qigong retreat and meditation retreat and uh, inquiry. A lot of Chinese medicine, self-care stuff in February in Troncones, Mexico. So if that's interesting, head on over to brodywelch.com and uh, check it out. Anyway, um, Lee Holden, thank you so much for joining me for this super fun chat. Thank you so much, Brody. Thanks for listening today. For more episodes of A Healthy Curiosity, you can visit the iTunes store. If you appreciated today's show, please leave us a review. This helps other people to find the podcast. You can also head to brodywelch.com where you can find free self-care resources, learn more about Chinese medicine, and let me know what you'd like to hear about on future episodes. I'd love to hear from you. Till next time, be good to yourself.